Hey everybody, welcome to Just Open It, the YouTube series in which I open recently acquired toys and action figures. My name is Russ. Thank you very much for watching this episode. I really appreciate it. If you're a fan of toys or action figures or pop culture in general, please consider subscribing to my channel, Karaoke Fanboy TV. Every week I do open a recently acquired toy or action figure, and this week I am opening the McFarlane Toys Superpowers The Flash. Recently acquired at a Walmart here in the Phoenix area, I was very excited to see this presumed second wave of Superpowers action figures hit the market. I say presumed because I've come to the conclusion that the concept of action figure waves, as we collectors or fans know them, might be a bit of a, a, bit of a misnomer when it comes to Superpowers. I think these figures are just going to be released um, at the whim of McFarland Toys, surely scheduled, but not in big clusters of figures as waves usually are, at least four to six, or in the case of Superpower's original wave, I think the first was nine action figures that came out in the 80s to uh, celebrate the first Superpower's action figures wave. Um, now we're getting them in drips and drabs. The first wave in this case would have been three figures, Superman, Batman, Darkseid, and then two vehicles, the Supermobile and Batwing. Um, then John Stewart was kind of this mysterious Wave 1.5, or is he a part of Wave 2? And it turned out both were kind of true in that he existed alone in addition to the, to the previous figures released. And now two more toys came out, the Batman Who Laughs and the Flash. Um, again, is this its own Wave, or um, is this part of Wave 1? I, I just tossed that concept out completely. And um, I've decided that these are just figures being released um, essentially on their own. So with that said, the Flash is the final figure I have to open from the entire Superpowers collection available right now, as far as I understand. And I'm very excited to do so because the Flash was one of my favorite figures in the original Superpowers line. I actually just loved the sculpt and I felt like the way his arms were bent, one arm was out a little further than the other one that was kind of tucked in. So it created this really cool running pose. Um, I often just ignored his superpowers feature, which was the squeezing of his arms to make his legs move. And I just played with him like a regular action figure and um, I got a lot of enjoyment out of that. So this figure, sans that special action feature, is as close as I'll get in a contemporary uh, flash action figure of this scale. So I'm excited to rip him open and see what he's like. Now the bio on the back is a single paragraph um, repeated in other languages below. But if you're familiar with any incarnation of the Flash, you know this origin well. In a freak lab accident, forensic scientist Barry Allen was struck by lightning and doused with chemicals which gave him the superpowers of the Speed Force. Now, he uses these powers to defend his hometown of Central City from the forces of evil as the Flash. Now, I find these origins, especially the last three figures, uh, Green Lantern, the Batman Who Laughs, and now the Flash, a little lacking in that the original superpowers came with mini-comics that helped develop the characters' personalities and backstories a little bit. If this is a kid's first Flash action figure, and it's very likely that a kid buying this figure knows about the Flash already, but if this is his introduction to Barry Allen, there's nothing back here that says he runs fast. And I think we fans have to understand that we take those very simple facts, Flash facts, for granted. It just says here that the, the lightning and chemical uh, combination uh, gave him super gave him the superpowers of the speed force and the speed force is capitalized and trademarked so it's obviously something very specific and does it completely explain that the powers of the speed force include running fast maybe even time travel access to the multiverse itself there could be some elaboration here to spark a kid's imagination and um, I just find that a little bit lacking. If these are figures meant to be displayed, as some uh, fellow collectors and fans and comments have, have uh, postulated, then I would think that this stuff on the back is just as critical as what we're seeing here in the front, because you're meant to keep this package intact. And so some elaboration here would be uh, much appreciated. I will say that with the release of The Flash, 
a cosmic treadmill would be a very cool vehicle to include, and it's actually more of a playset, right? But it would be a very cool superpowers esque um, a playset or, or, or vehicle for these characters because it kind of harkens back to that classic era, um, like the Supermobile does. But it could be used in um, some fun contemporary ways um, as kind of the design of these characters implied. Because we're looking at a contemporary Flash here. That thick belt, especially, um, is very much New 52. You can see from the illustration here. So I'm going to turn to the package now. I know it took me long enough, ironically, considering this is the Flash. You think I would have opened him a little faster, but time flies when. Uh, I get on these little rants. I want to say that, you know, I, I speculated with the Batman Who Laughs and Green Lantern, who might have drawn the spot illustrations on the packaging, this uh, little pinup that we get on every Superpowers package. Uh, I'm surprised, frankly, that McFarlane Toys doesn't credit the artist, even if it's Jim Lee and the style is recognizable. Um, there are a lot of Jim Lee copycats out there, and I'm not 100% sure. That's Mr. Lee's work. So I'm surprised that McFarlane, one of the founding fathers of Image Comics, doesn't include a little artist's credit back here. And I know it's a slippery slope because then do you credit the, the, the person that designed this whole uh, kind of th this whole back with the, with the checklist and the bio? I don't see why not. You know, quite frankly, it's the 21st century. Creators' rights have never been more prevalent in the industry of comics and entertainment at large. Why aren't package designers getting credit on action figure boxes? I think it's a good question that deserves an answer, but not today. The only question we're asking is, is this Flash action figure cool? And we're about to find out. So let me get rid of this trash. And I like what I see so far. Um, if I were to put the Flash in a running pose... Here he is, especially on camera, that red really pops. It's a really bright red um, in contrast with the yellow of his, of his suit. Color scheme is there for sure. Um, he looks very serious, of course. He's, he's got some crime fighting to do. But um, all in all, this is the figure that evokes the most nostalgia for me because you can see, I mentioned the arms. One's a little longer than the other. So with that, you can kind of create a running pose. Um, and I think it works great, quite frankly, his head as well. Man, these lightning bolt um, helmet pieces are huge. So it really creates a nice kind of exaggeration of the flash in a good way. I mean, it, it just indicates motion as those are kind of meant to do. And um, I like it a lot. We have some... Um, holes on the bottom of their feet, and I didn't even look on any of the other figures to see if that was something that was included. Comment below and let us know. Um, did Superman and Batman, I mean, I can grab them and look, but did Superman and Batman have holes on the bottom of their feet for pegs? Um, again, for a cosmic treadmill, a couple pegs, um, you plug him in and you like spin the outside of it to make it look like he's running. And there's some some sparkle effects and stuff, man. I would re I would buy that in a heartbeat, and I'd spend thirty bucks on that um, because it would be a new addition that evokes kind of that nostalgic DC Comics era that uh, so many of us fans know superpowers for. So keep that in mind, uh, Mr. McFarlane, because the Flash is uh, out of the park, out of the ballpark. I like it a lot, and he might be my favorite figure so far. Frankly, all of these figures, the, these last three, because they're sans cape, one of the biggest points of contention with the Batman and, and Superman figures, these are superior figures so far. The emphasis is on the character uh, himself and the sculpt, the paint application, the posability, the playability, and, um, and I like where this line is headed based on what I see here with the Flash. Um, here's my ultimate question. To summarize the entire Superpowers line so far is without the packaging, without the iconography of the Superpowers burst and the, the pinup um, alongside the bubbled figure and the star-studded banners, 
If I just handed you any one of these figures that I've opened in the last month or so, and I said, hey, outside of the package, this is a new Superpowers action figure. Knowing your love of Superpowers from the past, and I assume if you're watching this video you have such love, would you look at that figure and say, oh yeah, I could see that. I could see how this Batman Who Laughs is a Superpowers 2.0. I could see how this Flash is a Superpowers 2.0. Or is this just a regular, awesome Flash figure that without that action feature really isn't indicative or representative of the Superpowers brand overall? There's been some hot debate about whether or not these figures should include an action feature. And I dare propose that that action feature is what makes Superpowers Superpowers. Otherwise, these are more in line with the DC Universe figures that came out a couple years later. And even then, that Flash had a bizarre um, wind-up feature. You would wind his back and the legs would run automatically like a, like a monkey banging cymbals. <laughs> I'm not an advocate of that either. I'm just posing the question. Are these truly superpowers if the figures themselves don't have any powers at all? Or are these just some other kind of DC Universe action figures that we've called superpowers out of our thirst, our perpetual and ongoing thirst for nostalgia. I'm guilty of such a thing. I'm thirsty for the stuff I had when I was a kid. It, it reignites my love of these characters. Um, so I'll continue to buy superpowers as long as they are on the pegs in the hopes that they keep that feeling of nostalgia alive while at the same time presenting something new and exciting. Thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. You know, if you're a fan of my rants, uh, please follow me on Instagram as well at AmazingAZComics. I do self-publish my own mini comics and zines, and I'd love for you to check those out there. Uh, next time, tune in when I grab a toy laying around here in my living room, and uh, I hold it up and I say, you know what? Just open it. <laughs> I'll catch you here next time.